Hello everyone. Um, in this talk, I want to present our new Enclave security architecture, which we call Cure, which provides customizable and resilient enclaves. And first, I want to start with a short introduction of Enclave security architectures for those of you who don't know them. So enclaves are currently the most prominent approach for protecting sensitive services. So if we assume an operating system which runs multiple processes or apps, and um, in our setup, we assume that the OS is potentially compromised, then an enclave security architecture is typically used um, to protect sensitive services in isolated compartments, which we call enclaves. Now, these isolated compartments are usually backed by hardware-assisted security mechanisms, which are implemented in the extended system on the system on chip. And um, the configuration of the, of the security mechanisms is done by a trusted software component, which runs in the highest privileged software level, or in some cases, or in some enclave architectures, um, the trusted um, component is also just represented by microcode. Now this trusted software component then assigns system resources um, to the enclave. So this could be memory, cores, or also parts of the cache. And this way, the enclaves on the sensitive services in the enclaves are completely isolated from the potentially compromised operating system. So when we um, analyze the existing enclave security architectures, there are several challenges and that came to our mind. The first one is, of course, um, side channel attacks. There's a lot of research on side channel attacks and defenses, and still on the existing enclave security architectures, those are not included as in industry solutions. And here we are talking about cache side channel attacks and also control side channel attacks, um, which exploit the sharing of cache, uh, page tables or also interrupt handlers. Um, the second aspect of, of challenges of enclave computing um, are basically missing functionality regarding secure I.O. or secure direct memory access. And in the later of this um, talk, we will call this a, a secure binding of enclaves to peripherals, uh, which we want to have. So this means at one point we want to have um, secure I.O. We, so we want to protect uh, MMIO regions of a peripheral, and we also want to um, protect um, the enclaves from malicious direct memory access devices. Now, the thir third part of the challenges are the uh, configurability. So when we analyze the existing enclave architectures, we realize that they do not allow to adapt the enclaves to the security and functionality requirements of the sensitive services which are protected in the enclaves. And instead, they also they all provide a, a, only a one-size-fits-all approach. And in the next slides, uh, we will look at what this one-size-fits-all approach means. Um, so one-size-fits-all, we say it's just one enclave type that a certain enclave security architecture provides. And one type that we first will look at is the user space enclave. So we will have here a high-level figure of a processor, which um, contains the L1 cache, the MMU, and TLB. And um, is connected over the system bus um, to a L2 cache, which could, of course, be also in front of the system bus, but here it is displayed after the system bus and then connected um, to a memory chip. So, this is the software um, that we assume. And on this, uh, sorry, the hardware that we assume, and on the software level, we have, as we saw before, after enclave architectures, we have a commodity operating system that runs several um, applications. And now the user space enclaves, as the name implies, they just isolate um, a complete user level process um, from the rest of the system, so from all of the other apps and also from the operating system. And um, again, we assume that we have a trusted software component which runs in the highest privilege level and um, which is um, there to basically um, set up the enclaves and, as we said before, also configure the hardware primitives, the security primitives in hardware. And now, when we look at this user space enclaves, the, the, the pro side of this enclaves is basically that we can re reuse the OS functionalities since all of the enclaves share the operating system. So we don't um, have to implement um, this stuff again. So we have a low system resource consumption since we can, since we can reuse services um, from the operating systems and the enclaves themselves are um, rather small and they are easy to develop. 
um, for the Enclave developers since they uh, only have to port um, their sensitive services to the Enclave and not any um, kind of additional uh, runtimes um, that would be needed as we will see for the other Enclaves and um, this is required. But on the con side, of course, um, since the, those enclaves only run in the user level, they don't have any um, privilege to, to, to run privileged code like drivers and we get an increased performance overhead um, for the context switching between the enclave and the operating system because we might have to do some sanitization here. And um, we can, and also the protection from control side channel attacks is challenging since the user space enclave relies um, on on the operating system for some services like the memory management. <clears throat> um, so some enclave security architectures that provide su such kind of enclaves are a Sanctum, SGX, and um, a lot of uh, um, various extensions that um, um, were built based on SGX. <clears throat> Now another type of um, enclave which is quite different to the current uh, to the user space enclave is the kernel space enclave. So here basically we have the same setup from hardware and software side, but the kernel space enclaves um, does not only encapsulate a user the user level but also the privilege level. And here we still assume that we have some trusted component in the highest privilege level. And the, the pros are here that basically we can run privileged code in the enclave. There is no overhead for context switching to the operating system since um, the kernel space enclave has its own enclave runtime that can take off um, tasks um, such as memory management. So we don't have to switch to the operating system anymore. So it's easier to prevent control side channel attacks. But on the con side, we have an increased resource co consumption since we always have to duplicate this enclave runtime for each enclave. We have an increased overhead um, for the enclave setup because also the enclave runtime needs to boot and um, well, the, the enclave developer first needs to develop this runtime. And um, enclave security architectures that provide such kind of enclave are, for example, Trust Zone, some um, Sanctuary, which is one of our um, earlier works, and also Keystone. Um, now, when we look at Cure, um, what we basically uh, want to do is, of course, tackle the aforementioned challenges. Um, on the security side, it means we want to protect against control side channel attacks. We want to protect um, against cache side channel attacks. On the functionality side, we want to provide a secure binding between peripherals and enclaves. And um, on the configurability, of course, um, as we saw, we don't want to be limited to one specific type of enclave. Instead, we want to provide different type of, type of types of enclave so that uh, an enclave developer can um, select the enclave that basically fits best to its user scenario. scenario. And um, so here's a, some high level view of what um, QR looks like. So we implemented our prototype on a um, RISC-V rocket chip using um, rocket cores. And again, we have the, um, the same setup in hardware and in software that we assume, but now basically Cure can provide multiple types of enclaves. So as we can see here, user space enclaves like enclave A, kernel space enclaves like enclave B and C. And we could also just run the enclave app directly bare metal as shown for enclave C. Again, um, we will have a security monitor running um, in the highest privileged um, software level, which is the mach machine level, which is responsible um, for the setup of the enclaves and for all security critical tasks and services for example, remote attestation. We will also include uh, a way-based cache partitioning on the shared L2 cache um, so that we can assign um, cache ways exclusively to enclaves. And we do all of this by um, introducing a new, what we call a filter engine um, on the system bus, which does the, um, the access control as we will see, and also some minimal changes at the processor. And this filter engine allows us also secure binding between the enclaves and the peripherals. And now we will um, take a quick look at the filter engine. Um, so when we look how the system bus basically looks like on the rocket ship, we have different rocket cores that are connected over the system bus to the peripheral bus and to the to the main memory. And usually you will have some arbiters um, that decide who's next um, to access the per uh, peripheral or the memory um, when we have uh, multiple parents, um, so multiple rocket cores or DMA devices connected to the system bus. And what we had to do, we had to first 
um, extend the tiling protocol and to get our enclave ID incorporated, which we use to identify the enclaves. And then um, we added logic and registers to the arbiters and decoders, um, basically to implement the access control uh, mechanisms. And if we look at the memory arbiter a bit closely, we will see that basically the arbitration logic is not modified, but we will have um, one register for each of the enclave, which defines um, a continuous memory region that the enclave is allowed to access. And besides that, we also had to um, connect um, our components to the peripheral bus and the interrupt bus so that from software, all of these registers could be um, configured. And also if an uh, access violation is, um, is, um, is found that an interrupt is triggered, which can be handled by the security monitor. Um, now looking at the software components, um, we basically have the usual setup. Um, the enclave setup is triggered by the OS. The OS performs all the security uncritical tasks and the SM performs all the security critical tasks. For example, the binary verification, interrupt configuration, um, setting up shared memory for communication on also the page table um, modification for the user space enclave for the kernel space enclave. This is not required um, because here the memory management is done by the enclave runtime. For the operating system in our prototype, um, we use the Linux kernel. Um, and the security monitor is quite small, so it can be um, can be verified. And um, for for the enclave B here, we again use the Linux kernel as the enclave runtime. So in conclusion, um, Cure basically um, tackles all the challenges that we provided. Um, that we described, and um, Cure also offers many possibility for further development. For example, for VM enclaves, or also for new chi um, cache, um, new side channel resilient cache architectures. Um, so, if you have any more uh, any questions, um, please don't hesitate to send me an email. And thank you for your attention.